My name is Dr. Rebecca Hernandez. I am the director of the UCSC American Indian Resource Center. It is my privilege to share the land acknowledgement with you today. UC Santa Cruz is located on the unceded territory of the Awaswa speaking Yupi tribe. The Amamutsan tribal band comprised of the descendants of indigenous people taken to missions Santa Cruz and San Juan Bautista during Spanish colonization of the Central Coast, is today working hard to restore traditional stewardship practices on these lands and heal from historical trauma. Hi, I'm Alice Wilkins. I am the College Academic Manager for Cal College. My advice for you all is a deceptively simple one, and that is to give a damn. Give a damn about yourself so that you can advocate for yourself even if you are full of doubt. Give a damn about the people you surround yourself so that spending time with them nourishes your soul. And give a damn about the work that you do so that your passion grabs the attention of others and together you impact the people around you. So why is it deceptively simple? Because giving a damn is hard work. It means constantly being engaged when you are weary or worse, indifferent. It means constantly taking a good hard look at yourself and the people around you to make sure that you are doing your part to sustain a relationship or letting it go when it isn't working anymore. It means constantly pursuing the truth or truths, whatever they may be. Perhaps the isolation, uncertainty, unrest these past two years have taught you how difficult it is to give a damn. But I hope that you've also learned how important it is and how richly rewarded you are when you give something or someone your love and attention. So congratulations, class of 2021. I'm so very proud of you. And I cannot wait to see how you will rock the world. Cheers. Hi, I'm Alan Christie. I'm the provost of Cal College, and I want to congratulate you on your graduation. I'm going to join some others in giving you a quick thought about your future. Many of you came to the college with the intention of getting that degree. You, will, you needed the credential to be able to make your way in the world, and now you have that degree. Credentialing is one of the things that universities are for, but the university is for a couple other things. You're also, while, during your time here, learning all kinds of things, genuinely learning it, not just learning it to get the grade. And you're also growing as a human being by getting to know each other, getting to know a diverse group of people, having experiences all around the world. So now that you have that degree in hand, 
my advice to you is to dig in deep to all those other things you did in the university, the learning and the growing. Those are the things that are going to be really important in that next stage of your life. The credential is going to help you open doors. But from now on, it's that stuff that you learned, the way that you grew in the university, that's going to be the key to success, to helping you build careers that you may not even be able to imagine right now. So congratulations, class, on a job well done. Um, go out in the world, succeed. Come on back and visit us anytime you want to. Congratulations. Christie, and it is my honor to serve as the provost of Cal College, the very first college established here at UC Santa Cruz in 1965. On behalf of the fellows of Cal College, I welcome you to the 55th annual commencement ceremony of Cal College here at the University of California, Santa Cruz. On behalf of the fellows and students of Cal College, I extend a heartfelt thanks to the mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, guardians, siblings, cousins, spouses, children, and best friends of each and every graduating senior. Thank you for all you have done for us and your students. The sacrifices you have made, the comfort you have provided, the encouragement you have extended. You have been the wind under our wings. We know it hasn't always been easy, so today it is especially sweet to celebrate the achievements of all our loved ones. Being provost of Cal College is a demanding but rewarding job. As provost, I guide the academic mission of the college, promote student research, occasionally admonish, admonish academic misbehavior, keep in touch with our generations of alumni, and try to raise money so that we can provide as many opportunities as possible for meaningful and transformative experiences. Cal College was founded with the intention of creating a multi-generational community of learners, students, teachers, staff, and alumni working together, as our motto puts it, in the pursuit of truth in the company of friends. In boiling important ethical imperatives into a few words, mottos can run the risk of sounding cliched. But I encourage us all to regularly return to contemplation of just what it means to pursue truth in the company of friends. We work in the company of friends, a collaborative community forged with people for whom we bear love and commitment. We pursue truth as a lifelong endeavor, and we commit to the goal of truth 
regardless of its inconvenience or rebuke to our habits. At Cal, we are not just preparing you for a career, but for the pursuit of truth in all areas of your life, your career, your civic participation, and your personal relationships. But I've also seen that this position has another important dimension, bearing witness to our students' lives as they strive for their degrees. This means being present to see their triumphs and acknowledge their struggles. It means, in short, to see them not just as students doing well or poorly in a class, but to see them as whole people engaged in an ongoing effort to build their futures in the community here on campus and many communities off. This has been another trying year for us all. In your junior year, you persevered through blackouts, wildfires, strikes, and now a pandemic that made it impossible for us to work or celebrate together. The challenges of your classes in your senior year have been compounded by disruptions and distractions as the world crashed into our living and learning space, presenting us with immediate problems demanding attention from climate change to politics to the deficiencies of our basic infrastructure. The university is sometimes described as an ivory tower as a way of expressing the hope that during your time here, you can focus yourself on your studies to prepare for your work in the world, buffered somewhat from the noise outside. But in these two years, that noise could not be held at bay. As you fought to finish your studies, the world demanded that you pay attention now. Wait no more. Throughout this year, as we found that the things we took for granted can't be taken for granted anymore, I often thought of the first class at Cal College in 1965. They came here before the campus infrastructure was completed. They lived in trailers on the East Field and took their classes in the gym. Alongside the faculty, they invented a new curriculum and sometimes swung hammers to build new buildings. Having none of the accommodations that they would have had had they gone to Berkeley or UCLA, they imagined a new kind of university that bound life and learning together. They call themselves pioneers. In this past year, I came to think of you all as a new pioneer class. Alongside your professors and the staff of the university, you worked to figure out new paradigms of learning and engaging. We had ample opportunities to see that losing access to our basic infrastructure was awful. Not being able to meet in person in the classroom, to have those unstructured, unscheduled, and unanticipated conversations with your fellow slugs was a real loss. Yet I also witnessed among you all tremendous generosity to each other and to your professors and let's be, let's be honest, to me. And that is the key to our ability to come out of the other end of this pandemic, not just surviving, but building something new. A pioneer in a true sense is someone who steps forward in uncertainty and builds in generosity a way towards something new. Pioneering usually comes at the beginning of a tale. For you all, it came at the end of your UCSC story. But as every commencement speaker will tell you, commencement isn't really the end, it's the beginning of the next phase. You leave this university pioneering a way forward into this troubled world for yourselves and the rest of us. So let me thank you for the thing that touched me most of all during these two years, your generosity to each other as we navigated the most uncertain times I've experienced in my quarter century at UC Santa Cruz. I'm proud of you all. I'm very pleased to introduce our commencement speaker, Cameron Vanderskoff. Cameron is a Cal College graduate from 2011. After Cal, Cameron went on to Columbia University where he did a master's degree in oral history. Since 2015, Cameron has been working as an oral historian and writer based in New York City. While still a student here, he began his career as an oral historian by doing a series of interviews with luminary faculty from Cal's founding days. Also while a student, he joined the UC Santa Cruz Library's Regional History Project, becoming one of the three named co-editors of a wonderful oral history of UC Santa Cruz called Seeds of Something Different, which was just published in 2020. And just this spring, he published, again as co-editor, The Empty Year, an oral history of the pandemics of 2020 at UC Santa Cruz. Beyond Santa Cruz, he has worked on a variety of projects, on artists such as Robert Rauschenberg, on the Apollo Theater in New York, on the Harlem VFW Post, in an emerging field known as medical humanities, and on a fascinating activist for the homeless in New York City. He's currently hired by the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology to produce a 10th anniversary history of the Institute's founding and early years. 
In 2016, Cameron and I co-founded the Okinawa Memories Initiative, an international public history project involving oral history and archival research that explores the global impact of the American military base complex in Okinawa. I've known Cameron since he was a student, and I've been impressed with the way he approaches his education here and the way in which he has built his career in the spirit of his time here at UC Santa Cruz. As someone who's both navigated these tumultuous times as a young college graduate and as a chronicler of others' lives, Cameron has a lot to say about making this transition you're about to make meaningful and mindful. I'm so grateful that this man who was my student is now my friend and colleague. I'd like to welcome Cameron Vanderskoff to the stage. Hey everyone, and hello from Uptown Manhattan, New York City. It's for real one of the honors of my life to come back home, even if I can only do so virtually and be here with you today. To the class of 21, congratulations. I was where you're at now 10 years ago when I graduated in 2011. Today, I'm going to speak to you from that place, hopefully far enough away to offer something for real about what my time at UCSC has meant to me, but close enough that my experience vibes with your own. In years past, I would be giving this address as I did 10 years ago when I gave the student address from the platform on the East Field, the sweep of one of the most beautiful views in the world behind me. And we would be in each other's company instead of me in New York and some of you in Santa Cruz, many others across California and beyond. We are living in a time of many changes and long tides. But some things are constant. Like it's funny, when you graduate, you think you're getting out. What's next? Where am I going? And crucially, two questions. What am I going to be? Or what are you going to do? For me, that whole getting out or moving on thing hasn't totally panned. I've stayed super connected with UCSC, both the university itself through my oral history work and my college friends. Some places you never leave and never leave you. Last month, my grandpa, who will be 100 years old next month, gave the commencement speech at his high school where he was class of 1939. 10 years ago, I thought a decade was an age. A lot of stuff has changed. I live on another coast, the world has changed, but I also still feel close to this place. And today I'm gonna to say why I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Not to say do as I've done, but to invite you to start thinking about what will you see Santa Cruz mean once it's your past. Of course, your present at UCSC has been unique. That story is yours to tell. You have lived it and earned it through experience just as you have your degree. And it has been unique. I co-edited a book on the history of the campus and I can tell you safely, there is no precedent for COVID-19 and the tumultuous 2020 and 2021 in campus history. You have come up and earned this rite of passage in a time of crisis, a terrible disease and a nation's cruelly failed response of American inequality and racism of campus protests and the ever more real threat of climate change, whose fires came too close to burning down our campus home, the place that connects us all. It has also been a time of absence, of separation from one another and from those lost to these pandemics. To understand that, I have been reflecting on a quote from one of my most profound mentors from oral history, who was also one of the founding faculty members of UCSC, Dr. J. Herman Blake. We talk about pioneers at UCSC, but he was and is a true pioneer. He was the very first black faculty member at UCSC and he was at Cowell College in 1966. He is a quote that I often turn to in my work in designing oral history projects and in life when I think about things like privilege, 
like gratitude and like justice. Here it is. When you get to the table, don't just think about having succeeded. Think about who's not there. I know that right now, many of us are thinking about those who aren't here, whether due to the coronavirus or its ancillary effects, which leave us physically apart from one another, from our friends on this special day. But I'm here to say that nonetheless, they are present here with us and we are here together because we are here in community. And that is true and will be true whether we're in the same physical room or the same Zoom room, because your story of UCSE is just beginning. In his commencement speech, my grandpa talked about whether there's a silver lining of COVID. It can sound absurd or insensitive to say that for so total a crisis. But for any generation that is coming of age and going out in the world in a time of crisis, it is a crucial question. Because I've interviewed people firsthand who have endured great catastrophes. World War II survivors in Okinawa, veterans from wars near and far, black elders who navigated Jim Crow and what came after, Americans who have faced decades of homelessness, addiction and disenfranchisement, and the everyday elders who have negotiated the infinite turns and pitfalls of life. They have shared with me their stories of catastrophe, but also their stories of continuity and creativity, of continued life and its preciousness, and the ongoing need for purpose, for community, and to make change. And in history writ large, we see this too, the Black Plague and the Renaissance, or the folks in Okinawa and Japan who drew on their terrible experiences in World War II to fight for peace, or the Black Lives Matter activists out there in the street insisting that the long American crisis of systemic racism will not be the end of the story. And there is another world today and tomorrow worth fighting for, to be fashioned out of crisis, yes, but written in justice. We think of these big reactions as movements and as resistance and as conflict, and those are all true. But I also believe that we can think of these as profound acts of creativity. I interviewed a great gospel and blues musician in Harlem once who, when he was little growing up in the projects and facing many obstacles, was told frankly by an elder, honey, you had a lot of crap piled on you, but crap can also make cars go and plants grow. That elder acknowledged the reality and didn't downplay it, but helped him imagine that wasn't the only story. That's creativity. To be clear, this creativity in no way reduces the tragedy or the hardship of the crisis itself. The loss in the last year and change is zero sum and it is a lot. None of us planned for this. None of you or your families and communities pictured that this is how the last two years of how your education would go down, learning remotely, perhaps back at home in a childhood bedroom and facing a sense of arrested development, or perhaps living in some other place you never imagined you'd be. My point is that the question facing all of you now is not an either or, but a big, bold-faced, open-ended, and crisis and creativity, challenge and creativity, uncertainty and creativity, loss and healing into creativity. In fact, UCSC's founders, the people who made Cowell in the 60s were animated by these kinds of questions and created a place they wanted to be different and new. Sometimes UCSC's difference gets reduced to something kind of unserious or like spaced out, 
Uh, and in California, when I tell folks about the banana slug, they go, oh yeah, right, like pretty dope. On the East Coast, I have had people literally go, a slug, like a slug. Oh, I'm so sorry. And I've just been like, no, I'm good. It's not a bad thing. Um, but it wasn't always that way for me. I had a hard time at first at UCSE connecting and I seriously thought about leaving. I put in transfer applications and found myself in doubt about my path. I found that it wasn't the same as it had been when my mom and aunt went here. It was bigger. Some of those founding goals seemed to have been lost. But my understanding of what my UCSC education means has grown over the years. In fact, it took years after my commencement to come to understand that meaning and to understand that it still wasn't over, that this was something I could grow through life. For me, UCSC taught a skill of critical listening, of a different approach, of finding another way and of moving beyond convention. I thought when I was still at UCSC that maybe that was mostly university PR and other universities are more or less similar. But I'm gonna tell you, it turns out that's not the case. 10 years into my professional career now in New York, I've been in way too many rooms with way too many other folks who went to undergrad at Ivy Leagues or other universities that are often considered more elite than UCSC. These are the folks who are like a slug, like the thing that crawls. Uh, I guess what I would say is some folks in this world will always find something to separate the quality from the subpar or the weird, the lion or the tiger from the slug. But my work teaches me that each place mm -hmm. brings its own knowledge, its own teachings, its own way of knowing. Each one of us can hold our head up. And when it comes to universities, I truly feel like I've had something those other folks don't. The slug is a good stand-in for, as Provost Christie puts it, irreverence, irreverence the ability to look at something critically, skeptically, and imagine something else. UCSC helped me learn that. Of course, we know that UCSC is not perfect, and in fact, far, far from it. You all experienced the bitter cola strikes and the divisions within the campus around such profound and basic realities as economic and racial justice. The struggle to make UCSC truly serve the communities of California across class, across race, and more is unfinished. So as an oral historian and an alum, I do not wish to idealize UCSC or to flatten its problems. Instead, I'm here to encourage you to simply stay open to what the meaning of this place could be for you. To me, it's meant having an unconventional career. Again, on the flip side, it's also meant student loans, which are no joke, and I am still paying those off. Um, and I remember real clear in my last year at Santa Cruz, living in a house on Western with 10 people and sharing a less than legally zoned garage with two other people. Before that, I lived on a couch on Oxford Street by Swift. The good news is that now, if you leave Santa Cruz, wherever you go, the rent will probably be cheaper. When I moved to Manhattan, as I saw many others have sticker shock, I was like, eh, you know, this is nothing new. Uh, and I'll tell you, I pay less now for my room in an NYC apartment than I would have paid had I been alone in that garage room those years ago. Uh, so the bottom line is, what I'm trying to get at is unexpected things can come out of this experience for you all. I started my pathway in oral history interviewing elders, including some of the same people who created Cal College, like Dr. Blake. Now I run my own business, my own practice in oral history, where it's my job to listen to other people's stories and learn from them. So if they say a banana slug, I'm so sorry, or in my case, a humanities degree, I'm sorry, 
what was I thinking? Your poor mom slash family slash future children. Consider what this place has taught you to create. Because you all stand at a true crossroads of global and local history. There are very few of those founding faculty of UCSC left. Many of the folks I've interviewed have since passed away. Our founding alumni are now in their 70s. There's a changing of generations. Now you too have had to be pathbreakers. Education itself is being redefined again and you've had to respond in real time. Meanwhile, this nation as a whole is being once again changed by a wave of civil rights and a social justice movement in a way we have not seen since the 60s. We always tell graduates that you are the future. I was told that 10 years ago and I was like, I don't know what that means. But you all are graduating in a truly historic moment, perhaps domestically comparable only to graduating in the turmoil of the so-called Spanish flu and the racial justice struggles of that era. The class of 2021 is facing hurdles not unlike the class of 1921. Now you have the challenge of living these times meaningfully. And so where do your UCSC teachers, your UCSC education fit into that? My take is this, college isn't about learning facts. Most of the things which temporarily mattered a lot to you for a test, a paper, a lab will pass from your memory. A class that stressed you out might be forgotten entirely. At this point, it's just not about remembering the fine points of core course or nailing the requirements for your major. You won't. And if you do, that's good, but that's not the most important thing because college is not about facts. It's about learning how to know and about how to pay attention. A part of that is when you don't know, learning how and when to listen. The simple, humble act of listening to others, to elders, to your friends can take you places you'd never imagine. You'll never stop learning. Because in life, the expectations will be less clear. Your path, yours to walk. So I return to my opening questions. It's not just about what am I going to be or what am I going to do? A deeper question is what do I want to create? And perhaps deeper still, who do I want to create it with? That question is a big one. You see, I spend a lot of time talking to elders, folks in their 80s and 90s about their regrets, their achievements, their legacies, and their ongoing dreams. And you know what is often most meaningful to them? It's what they have created in life what they have created in life. And that could be regarding family and friends, work, community, and who they created it with. And many of them are still creating like Dr. Blake. My own decision to create an oral history practice has connected me to stories of difference, stories of innocence and experience from all walks of American life and beyond. I know I want to create with my family and also my chosen and growing family of friends from UCSC and beyond, as well as with the communities I get connected to through my work, whether my beloved new community of Harlem or the Gullah Geechee communities of the Carolinas or Okinawa or Bolivia. So you have a degree but the true meaning and potential of your education lies ahead. As Dr. Blake said, if you get to the table, make room for who's not there. And I would say, encourage others to follow you. Make space for friends, for mentees. Check your privilege, including that of your degree. Bring more chairs to the table. Tell your story and learn from others. That's community. 
that's solidarity, and that's education, unended and ongoing. And it can take you places. Like the interesting thing about Dr. Blake is he came to Cowell, but to create what he dreamed of, a college that would reflect the true beauty and diversity of California, he decided he had to leave. And by the early 70s, he had, and he co-created what we now call Oaks College. Sometimes we have to leave what we love and love, hate, or something complicated in between you are now leaving your undergraduate education. So I leave you with this. What will you create out of this time of crisis? For after the fires that have endangered Santa Cruz, there has also been new growth. Once again, the creativity doesn't diminish the crisis. But without the growth, there would only be the fire. And we, you, me, our communities, deserve more than just the fire. We deserve the garden, the new growth, too. And so do those coming up after us. Your UCSC education is just beginning. Congratulations to the class of 2021. I believe in you and what you will now create together. Me and many others are here to support and build with you. Congratulations on an extraordinary achievement in this extraordinary time. Thank you. Courtney Alicia Accurso. Dominic Anthony Aguirre. Brian Connor Albert. Dorothy Aldridge. Tristan Leaf Alleman. Gavin Andrew Anderson. Dahlia Syed Anwar. Jacob Ahrens. Raven Arnold. Emily Rose Arnoldi. Isabella Grace Atencio. Soma Sai Kumar Badri. John Junichi Bear. Ethan Isaac Bales de Gamajin. Daisha Aiko Baring. David Bartlett. Christina Grace Ballardi. Luis Soria Beltran. Sierra Ree Berg. Shelby Nicole Bernauer. Manav Rajesh Bhatia. Brenna Nicole Botello. JJ Anthony Bowen. Sierra Grace Boyanich. Kaylin Nicole Boyle. Caitlin Eileen Bazo. Hannah Michelle Brage. Ashley Bravo. Olivia Jane Brower. Ava Lee Burr. Caitlin Cancilla. Haley Alexandra Carl. David J. Cha. Kyle Chang. Fawaz Chowdhury. Rue Chen. Anya Chen. Wilson Maurice Chu. 
Zane Mateo Sintas. Camlin Kelleher Ciolo. Matthew Albert Collier. Adele Caldwell. Philip Earl Cook. Nicholas Edward Cooper. Seth Raja Kopis. Jenny Elizabeth Cordier. Madison Cortesis. Noah Scott Cover. Sasha B. Crawford. Mauricio Cruz. Andrew Curtis. Christina Isabel de Leon. Ivan Carol de Leon. Saul Ernesto de los Santos. Gabriela Elise de Carlo. Matthew Theodore Diederich. Sachin C. Despande. Audrey Tien Ando. Kaviljim Donyi Trevino. Annie Yajing Do. Eva Hunt Doyle. Christian Robert Dunn. Rivada Dutta. Jack Anthony Eaves. Morgan Item. Rocco Ranger Ellsbach. Alexander English. Timothy John Ernst. Daniel Brophy Escoto. Carlos William Esperanza. Jacoby Esposo. Andrea Isabel Estrada. Jeremy Yuchi. Helen Martha Everbach. Hua Fan. Sydney Leanne Fenn. Jacob Manlio Finkel. Sammy Flores. Erica Fong. Paige Mateel Forrester. Jenna Elizabeth Fry. Rex Rose Galley. Ben Garza. Niru Goshal Data. Josh Gillespie. Omar Alberto Gomez. Idalis Lisbeth Gonzalez Ferrer. Maya Catalina Gonzalez. Stephanie Gonzalez. Yuaki Goto. Zachary Gottesman. Sonali Goyle. Charlotte M. Grenier. Sierra D. Grindstaff. Gabrielle Hamza. Joshua Marvin Haryes. Spencer Kate Harris. Ryan John Harrison. 
Rachel Ann Haub. Jesse Lee Henderson. Hallie Holmes. Kylie Page Hong. Brent Mason Hopkins the Great. Michael She. Yang Hu. Oscar Wete. Rachel Ann Holter. Simran Hundle. Keely Hunter. Mateo Junha Huang. Kirsten Yoshiko Ikehara. Hoyian M. Antonella Infantosi. Ryan Matthew Jacobs. Viviana Jimenez. Jordan Hunter Refugio Jimenez Santian. Tara Gabriela Cavana Johnson. Theron Xander Joyer. Shaheen Karami. Shayan Hassan Karami. Bobby Karki. Travani Kasralikur. Gregory L. Kaufman. Siddhartha Kahl. Emma Leila Khorasani. Asal Kia Matla. Margo Kilroy. Soo Young Kim. Johanna Leslie Velasco King. Teraya Gabrielle Kinsey. Camille Kishelovich. Hannah P. Kanesht. Danielle Elizabeth Koch. Andreas Koy. Tiger Kochnik. Tiana Kajaski. Utkarsh Kumar. Paloma Isabel Kunesh. Madison Page Lacey. Romy Lay Danielle Bagtas Ladero. Michael Frederick Langrock. Nora Laszlo. Brian P. Lee. Maggie Lee. Sydney Ann Jun Oi Lee. Orly Levy. Drew Balmer Lewis. Emily Carol Lewis. Lin Jiyuan Lee. Serena Shinru Lee. Tommy Leong. Kenta Lindsay. Emma Leedham. Zihao Liu. Efren Uriel Lopez. Alexandria Corina Lujan. James Luck. Jia Isha Luo. 
Maura Elizabeth Lynch, Savannah Lyon, Rachel Mace, Irene McPherson, Swetha Madala, Julia Raquel Marco. Rohi Benjamin Marcus, Kayla Michelle Martin, Hannah Paulina Martin, Ryan Yoshito Masui, Paul Ray Mattix, Gianna Lisa Moreno. Savannah Rain McDowell, Christina Maria McNichol, Janet Christina Medlin, Larray Marisa Miranda, Relia Ray Misita, Danielle Shira Mitgang. Clementine Mitrani Bell, Natalie Kate Mo, Ryan Puya Mokhtari, Natalie Montelongo, Yuvia Moreno, Trevor Michael Moropoulos. Olivia Ann Morrow, Stephanie Sarah Munoz, Christina Nabayan, Jenna Rosemarie Newstetter, Andrew Minhua Win, Daniel Tian Win. Daniel Hui Noen, Max Knut Nilsson, Lars Alexander Nordstrom, Francis K. O'Byrne, Sean Michael O'Byrne, Alondra Paulina Ochoa. Joshua Brandon O'Connor, Trevor Delaney O'Neill, Ju Young Park, Hannah Marie Payne, Maxwell Alexander Pereira, Tiana Marie Pereira. Ruben Perez, Jacob Anthony Peters, Jessica Lanice Peters, Ross Pichatello, David Jacob Prager, Christopher Nathaniel Purcell. Cameron Putterman, Arya Chiang, Sunny Chandro Q, Gregory Vu Quach, Raquel Rabinez, Mateo Eduardo Ramirez Mercado. Andrea Carolina Ramos Coronado, Manveer Singh Randawa, Samuel Lee Rapp, Chelsea Kimberly Rascone, Owen Ballier Raymond, Luke Bliziotis Reddy. 
Therese Miranda Residoro, Jack R. Reed, David Patrick Amaral Resendiz, Patrick Joseph Rettig, Juan Sebastian Reyes, Yasmin Quetzali Reyes, Sarah Keltson Ricky, Lizette Rodriguez, Semilia Downey Rogers, Samuel Delaney Ross, Jacob Block Rosio, Shivanj Rastagi, Ethan Rain Sabaroff, Saburi Sai, Esther Sam, Clayton Thomas Sanborn, Lauren Nicole Sandifer, David Elliot Sansone, Warner Scheibe, Jeremy Tyler Schloss, Emily Claire Schneider, Alana Marie Schoen, Chase Edward Schulenberg, Brenna Scott, Osvaldo Serrano, Elliot Alexander Shanks, Siddharth Sharma, Isabel Daisy Sharus, Claire Xiao. Michelle Beth Schimberg, Peyton Quinn Sign, Rosa Maria Cimental, Cynthia Smith, Aiden Hauschman Sojourner, Ramya Srinivasan. Clara Whitworth Stanberry, Erin Oliver Steckline, Juelia Malia Stevenson, Donald Stewart, Madison Lee Strohauer, Joshua Ryan Sturm. Weber Sue, Rukaya Sunawala, Gio Sung, Janelle C, Isaiah Julian Tate, Amit Tall. Eric Tang, Ali Tarongo, Liam R. Thirty Acre, Aria Singh Thurman, Alexander Julio Titus, Scott Charles Tomlinson. Seth Allen Tonningson, Luke Traficante, Isabel Nguyen Tran, Hope Chayu Trumpeter, Elma Tajinovich, Grace Octavia Tui. Yana Rachel Ulitsky, 
Andrew Wasugi, Cynthia Valadon, Jessica Valverde, Susanna Michelle Vasquez Munoz, Carissa Dolores Villalobos, Alyssa Brooke Vizo. Drew Von Zweck, Holly Vorsanger, Twee Young Vu, Araya A. Watson, Jane Weikert, Arabella Elise Williams. Emily Grace Williams, Stephanie E. E. Wynn, Karen Wong, Robert Wong Singh, Lauren Michiko Wu, Audrina Marie Wood. Xavier Joaquin Woodruff Madeira, Robin Elizabeth Woods, Kevin Shu, Zhishuan Yang, Xin Chao Yin, J. E. Jenny Yu. Xander Michelle Young, Mark Olegovich Zakharov, Shayan Zargar, Bailey Sasweta Michelle, Lechi Zhang, Madeline Zhang. Alex Zhang, Chen Lu Zhang, Taylor Ann Zakardi, Zachary John Zulanis, Arturo Suno. Students, please rise if you are able. Howell College graduates, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Regents and the President of the University of California, I now confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Sciences as appropriate with all of the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. You may now move your tassels from right to left, signifying the conferral of your degree. Graduates, you accomplished much in your time at UC Santa Cruz and I know that great things lie ahead for you. You leave us now as Banana Slug alumni, but we hope that you will keep in touch. Please stay safe, stay well, and stay connected. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs>